Hi, this video is part four of a series of videos about generative music making, and the reason I'm making it is because my modular patches have recently become jealous. When I reviewed Novation's recent line of launch key products and Arturia's Microfreak, I was quite taken with their mutate and deviate or spice and dice functions. The idea is that you turn a couple of knobs and a generative riff is created based on notes you feed into either one, and that pattern is then set and stored in temporary memory. Let me give you an example. I'll feed the arpeggiator these three simple notes, and then mutate will gradually change it, but only for as long as I turn this knob. When I stop, the pattern will be frozen, and I can mutate it again, keep on auditioning patterns, and keep them if I like, or throw them away if I don't. But this pattern is now stored in RAM, and I could then deviate it, which, which means change it rhythmically. And then this rhythm is also stored in RAM, a pretty cool feature, which doesn't exist to my knowledge in modular because there's no RAM in analog or in modular. Now there are of course specific modules like the Turing machine from Tom Whitwell and marbles from Mutable Instruments, which have their own rules for creating generative or randomized patterns and then storing them temporarily. But what if you, based on the knowledge in the previous parts of this series, for example, created your own generative patch and wanted it to be able to store its values? Because a random stream of notes is one of the least random sounding things if everything keeps getting randomized. It's this ability to store or stop the randomization that lets us take pause, get used to the pattern, maybe add additional layers to it until we're ready to roll the dice again. So all this is nice if you have a launch key or a micro freak, but how can we temporarily store our patterns in a modular or analog environment? In this video, I'll take a look at a proposed solution using sample and hold modules and a sequential switch. I'll be showing it using VCV rack, which is inherently digital, but you can of course use analog hardware modules the exact same way, essentially as an analog RAM storage machine. The idea is to use multiple sample and hold modules to hold a series of generative values in place and then use a sequential switch to move from from one step to the next, then add on top of that a rhythm that can also be generated and frozen randomly. Let's take a look at a basic patch for storing melodies first without adding a rhythmic component. The top row of modules is simple. I've got a clock for tempo, virtual rings for plucks, and plateau for reverb so people won't say I'm plugging rings into clouds, and then that goes out to my interface. The bottom row is what makes the magic happen. This patch starts out playing a single repeating note, so it's not doing anything special, but I'll use this button as sort of like a mutate function to generate a pattern for me, and then freeze that pattern. I can then listen to it, see if I'm happy with it, and if not, I can change it up. There are additional parameters that I can tweak here from a generative perspective. But the point is that every time I press the button, the dice is rolled, a new melody is generated and stored, and I can choose to keep it or randomize it again if I want. So how does this work? I've got these random noise generators working all the time. When I press the button, each of these patched into its own sample and hold unit gets frozen, its value gets frozen. You'll see that when I press this button, the values on screen in the outputs and in the inputs here change, but are frozen for every button press. If you're building this patch with hardware modules, you'll need a module with as many sample and hold units as steps that you want in your pattern. DivKid just launched one with six, Dope for Sell a cheap one with two. Obviously, you'll need a few of those, but essentially each sample and hold module unit is kind of like an analog equivalent of a single byte of RAM. Now, if you wanted as much RAM storage in your modular as your phone has, you might need to spend several billions of dollars on sample and hold modules, but for a simple six or eight step sequence, that might be doable depending on your budget. What you have here is modular storage, or if this module was analog, analog RAM storage for 
in this case, up to eight bytes or units of information. We can then go ahead and use a sequential switch module to cycle through the different steps in this pattern. In hardware form, there are plenty of sequential switches. ALM just came out with Boss Boat 2, which is an interesting one, but there are plenty of others. Just to complete the picture from a generative perspective, the next two modules are what we use to tame the randomness into what are hopefully musically pleasing notes. In this patch, the notes that we choose in the quantizer represent the notes that we would have played into the launch keys arpeggiator, and the offset and attenuator module is kind of like like our octave range and transposition module. You can use the offset to transpose the pattern up and down and scale to choose the octave range. An attenuator and offset become really fun performance tools here. If you're looking for something like this on the hardware side, make sure you get a module with big knobs like the dual attenuverter from Bifaco. Okay, so we handled randomizing and freezing a pattern in place, but what about doing the same thing with the rhythms? You could come up with your own way of creating random rhythms, but to keep things simple, I'll look at existing rhythmic generators that we can, again, randomize and freeze with a sample and hold. If you have a Euclidean sequencer, you can use that. The problem with this particular module is that you can't control its parameters with voltage. If you're looking for a hardware module that would work nicely, check out DOT from DNI Pro. In this patch, I use Topograph, which is based on Mutable Instruments grids because I can use a voltage to select which rhythmic pattern it generates. This patch is very similar to the previous one on the bottom. We're only borrowing one sample and hold output and using its frozen value to select a pattern in Topograph or grids. When I get this patch going, the rhythm will be the default rhythm with a single note. And if I hit the big button, it will randomize all the steps in my pattern, but also the rhythm, because this sample and hold is connected to our rhythm generator and will shift the rhythm to a different one. So that's how I can audition this rhythm and melody. I could still use the offset and attenuverter to change the melody, or just hit the button again and get a different rhythm and melody. and rinse and repeat with the offset and attenuverter. But basically that's it. This is our quote unquote analog RAM storage and how we can emulate, mutate and deviate with modular gear. So that's pretty much it for this short but hopefully helpful video. I'll put these patches up on my Patreon. You can find all these ideas and many, many more in my ever-expanding book available to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Ring the bell after subscribing if you don't want to miss the next one. Thanks for watching.